paying with cash for your next vehicle? Before you start thinking that you should waltz into a dealership and flash that cash, no, 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 and no, hold that thought. It's a good thing you saved up your cash for a car purchase, but you gotta know this. Don't say, I'm paying cash the moment you walk into a car dealership. Coming up in this show is why you shouldn't reveal you're paying with cash too early in negotiations at a car dealership. And before this is over, I'm going to help you cash buyers understand how to defeat a car dealer using their own business model against them. It's a patented homework guy secret. There's also a giveaway at the end. Let's roll. I'm Kevin Hunter, known as the homework guy. Don't worry, the amazing Elizabeth will be back for the next show. For the best free car buying advice available on the planet, make sure you see the car buyers blog on thehomeworkguy.com. Also, by the time you're done seeing this show, our new book, Buy Smart, Drive Confidently, will be available as an ebook and an audiobook, and links for it can be found on our website, thehomeworkguy.com. The Homework Guy team has always proudly represented you, the cash buyer, so let's roll. Believe it or not, you're helping to push the industry to change. After all, cash transactions are a dealership's Achilles heel. Not to mention, it's always better for our economy when there's less borrowing and more saving and fewer people going into significant debt on a rapidly depreciating tangible asset. Yes, you heard me right. A vehicle is not an investment, no matter what any finance officer says to you. Let's quickly revisit the basics before diving in. You should always avoid announcing your intention to pay cash upon entering a dealership or when initiating contact with them via email. You might wonder, but isn't cash supposed to be king? While that was true years ago, sadly enough, that era has passed us by. In today's automotive market, hefty profits are crowned the new king, and these royal profits aren't easily garnered from cash transactions, nor from you smart homework guy viewers out there, and especially not from anyone who hires us to negotiate their car deal directly. More on that coming up. Now, admittedly, there are a few random dealers who prefer clean cash transactions, but they're clearly in the minority. Most dealerships, and particularly those with finance departments, offering loans and additional products, this type of dealership typically does not favor cash transactions. The reason is straightforward. Follow me in this analogy. Let's say you need to borrow $1,000 from a friend. They let you pay it back next month in full with no interest. Well, that's $1,000 total. However, if your friend suggests a monthly payment of $61 for two years, you might say, okay, it sounds reasonable because the payments are low and then you overlook the fact that you're paying $1,468 back against the original $1,000 loan. That was an interest rate of 40%. Paying back the $1,000 in 24 payments of $61 just added $468 to your bill. This example applies perfectly in car dealerships too. Beyond the charge interest expense, financing also allows dealerships to include various add-on products, dealer profit packing fees, and inflated interest rates often unbeknownst to the buyer. My friend Tom used to always say, what's behind the kimono? Well, that's a funny illustration. Financing provides dealerships with a veil to hide behind, or maybe a kimono, allowing the dealer finance officer to introduce numerous charges, a strategy not viable with a cash buyer. It seems like a strong statement to say that most dealers hate cash buyers, but it sadly is quite true. Hence, because of the finance office and the temptation that writing loans provides a dealership, cash is no longer king, the preferred payment method. Cash is definitely not king. By the way, this is exactly the kind of garbage the FTC cars rule aims to make blatantly illegal. If you're wondering when the rules will get implemented or you heard the date was paused due to NADA court challenges, I'd remind you that these practices are already against the law, but that message, unfortunately, falls on deaf ears with some of you. You don't get it like the amazing Kathy and Jackie did. So here's what happens if you declare your cash payment up front. You signal to the dealership that they'll likely miss out on a significant amount of profits from financing, leading them to want to potentially overcharge you for the vehicle. Negotiations stall or go nowhere. Many cash buyers end up paying more contrary to the expectation of a better deal, largely because of this dealership mindset. We also have a blog post about illegal price discrimination. That's when the dealer says, you're paying with a check and not taking a loan from us? That'll be a cash buyer fee of $9.99 extra, sir. To which you say, stop. If you hit this wall, you said you're paying cash way too soon. Let's avoid all this wasted time and effort. Let's identify what you say first when the dealer employees are pressuring you to talk about your payment method. When they ask, how do you plan to pay? 
You answer by saying, I don't have financial discussions in the parking lot or in the open showroom, but I'll be interested in seeing what your finance office has to offer after we agree on a price I'm willing to pay. That covers everything from their perspective. First, that you're saying you're not interested in hearing that question again. Second, that you know your rights. And third, that you're keeping the door open to getting a loan from the dealer. If they ask again, you say, as I said, if we can agree on a price I'm willing to pay, I'll be interested in what your finance office has to offer. And then firmly add, don't ask me the same question again. By the way, we don't recommend doing price negotiations at the dealership anymore. Test drive and then leave. Get the name of the salesman and then email them when you get home using the templates we provide on our blog, both for new and used cars. The template asks for price, fees, taxes, and finishes again with that awesome line. I'll be interested in hearing what your finance office has to offer if I decide to purchase this vehicle from you. You wait for a response and then negotiate a proper OTD before you return to the dealership. Note, do not argue with them about fees via email. Only ask for the price of the car itself to be what you're looking for. Their OTD offer might be full of crap fees and garbage add-ons, but it's easy to address. You send back a counter offer which subtracts out everything you don't want and give them your own version of an OTD offer which should only be a fair price plus tax title and license fees. Include this question. If I make a substantial down payment, can I just write you a check? It's an important question and you shouldn't forget to ask it. Liz's best advice at this point is to call your own DMV office on your own time using the agreed sale price of the car and the info like VIN, miles, etc and ask them how much it will cost to register the car and get the title and license plates for your state. That's the amount that you should plan to pay, so get your finances ready. If you're going to pay cash, you can actually write a personal check or bring a cashier's check, put a down payment on a credit card or a debit card. You don't actually bring green cash in your briefcase. Like a family I once met on the showroom floor, they had a brown paper sack, just don't do that. Now comes the magical moment when you finally answer the question. How do you plan to pay? You'll be sitting in the finance office with an agreed upon sale price of the vehicle. And if you have a trade, that'll be decided as well at this point. If you're planning to pay with cash, you have two options here. Number one, you can say, I'm going to pass on financing and have decided to pay cash. At this point, dig out your checkbook. Or if you don't like the possible argument, you can do number two, use the car dealership model against them to outsmart the finance officer. If you're negotiating in person with cash, Make sure you bring a copy of the FTC cars rule with you to help argue away the fake fees and add-ons. We have a dozen videos about this, so I won't cover it now, but go see 11 fake fees or car fees you shouldn't pay. As I said, if you don't want to argue and still get a better deal, you can use option two to outsmart the car dealer. We covered this step in depth in our video called Cash Car Buyers Can Outsmart Car Dealers if you want more in-depth look at this process. But you're here right now, so here's the basic idea. When you hear, how do you plan to pay? This is where you say, if we can agree on a price I'm willing to pay, I'll be interested in hearing what your finance office has to offer me for a car loan. Sure, you'll wanna have decent credit to do this, and you do have to fill out a credit app, but don't worry because the ding on your credit is very temporary, and you do have a sneak attack up your sleeve that they are not going to see coming. You take the car dealer's best offer for 63, 66, or even 72 months. To be clear, it must be longer than 61 months, so legally there cannot be a prepayment penalty. Do you see where I'm going here? Stay with me. You take the car dealer's loan and agree to it, and now you argue away the fees. If you decided to not negotiate from home like we teach you with an emailed OTD request, you can start this conversation by saying, I'm going to be making a car payment, but I just can't justify doing this loan with all these baloney fees. Have some disdain in your voice when you say this. The finance officer is required to show you the total sale price of the vehicle, as well as the total amount financed. That's just the law, not any regulation you might think isn't implemented yet. It will look like this. You can point to this data and say, look right here. The sale price of the car with taxes and state fees included is $54,900. But because of the loan, I will pay nearly $8,000 in loan interest. Since your loan markup is between one and two and a half points, you'll make thousands over the course of the loan. And yet here we are arguing over a 499 dock fee and what we both know is worthless window etching that neither of us wanted. I'd say you're making a killing on this loan as it stands. Look, 
I need to get on with my day. Perhaps I should just leave or do you drop the fees, take the big profit you're already making and we call it a deal. You'll pocket a 15 to 20% commission off this the way it sits. Most finance officers won't really like that you point out with certainty that you know how much their commission is going to be, say in that 15 to 20% range of the markup they're getting on the loan. And that's just for your loan officer. After he or she deflates and finishes up the paperwork, review it again carefully. Make sure the total amount financed and the total of payments shown are still correct. No added junk. They might even tell you, make sure you make at least four payments if you intend to pay off the loan early. And you just say, yes, sir. Sign, shake their hand and leave. Walk out the door and smile now because here's the best part. On loans over 61 months, there is legal protection for all consumers in every state that there is no prepayment penalty. You heard me say it once already. So what do you do now? When you get your payment book in the mail sometime over the next few weeks, you can simply take all your hard-earned money and pay off the car loan with one payment. Poof, just like that. See, you were worried when I told you to take the loan and a long loan at that, but here's the funny part of this whole scenario. When you pay off a car loan from a dealership before three months, the finance officer gets what's known as a chargeback. That is, he loses his commission. <laughs> Listen, friends, here at THG, we're not about taking money and income away from honest citizens, but feel free to comment down below if you're still wondering if these are indeed honest citizens you're dealing with in dealer finance. Dishonesty deserves a just reward, which is nothing. If you enjoyed this great turning of the tables, which is a perfectly legal type of bait and switch that finally serves you the car buyer and not the dealer's pocketbook, share our homework guide videos with family and friends. If you like what we teach but want direct help planning your car journey, consider a membership at the help desk with Liz, either at $24.99 for email support or $49.99 for tech support from both of us. We are busy, but for members, response time is always fast. We coach you on black book values, the steps of the car deal, and review your offers. If you want to talk directly to me, sign up for a $99 phone call and get all of your questions answered. Looking for a good car deal, but just can't find one? Well, you could be shopping for the wrong car. Did you know that inventory levels drive prices for new and used car prices? If you have your sights set on a new ride, something with Teeny tiny inventory, well, you're bound to overpay no matter how long you do your homework or try to wait it out. At the same time, other makes and models are filling up parking lots and just sitting there. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy. Back today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal, wearing the new homework guy swag, by the way. Today. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Looks great. It's time for a new car inventory market update, homework guy style, but it's more than a report on who has how many cars. Today, we're educating you on what kinds of cars should have the best deals right now. Stick around for the end because we're giving away some homework guy phone calls with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Kevin Hunter. Yes, as the automotive landscape continues to evolve, U.S. auto sales have shown mixed results. Forecasts for U.S. light vehicle sales in March range from a 4.7% to a robust 12% increase, showing a very hopeful rebound from the pandemic and chip shortages. This upward trend is supported by high retail demand and fleet shipments, though a competitive market as inventories recover might temper this growth pace. This is especially noticeable at Toyota and Honda. You know, Kevin, it feels like half the people who reach out to me through Homework Guy memberships are looking for a Toyota, new or used, and rightfully so. Toyotas are indeed great cars that have been built to last forever, but unfortunately, you may have to wait a long time to get one. Be ready to spend day and night searching. And for some of our members, when they finally find the right Toyota, it's in a different state, and before they can make a deposit, someone else has bought it. This is why we're bringing you the inventory update. We'll have more on Toyota inventory and deals specifically coming up, but... Here's a snapshot of the overall car market, according to Cox Automotive. As of late March, the total U.S. new vehicle inventory stood at the highest levels in two years, signaling a strong rebound and a market right for buyer-friendly negotiations. These shifts indicate an industry on the mend, offering better deals as supply chains stabilize and inventories are bulging. The average incentive per vehicle jumped 67% to $2,800 on average. Some standout offers include hefty discounts from Ram and GMC with up to $7,500 off certain large pickup trucks. At the same time, the average price of new vehicles has slipped down to $44,186, a drop that underscores slow movement toward increasing affordability for consumers. 
Well, here's a look at industry day supply by automaker. If you didn't know, day supply means how long it would take to sell all the cars on the lot based on the last 30 days of sales. Here we go. Toyota has taken a nice jump from the mid 30s to now a 43 day supply, having 261,000 units for sale. Honda is at about 59 days, up from a 44 days that we reported not long ago with 176 vehicles for sale. Lexus, which is the Cadillac line for Toyota, with much more cushier rides and features, has a day supply of 61 days. If you really love Toyota but having trouble finding what you want, think about upgrading to a little bit nicer ride and test drive a Lexus. Our viewers are having mixed feelings on Kia. Their day supply is at 69 with 109,000 vehicles for sale. But of all the bad dealer reports that we get, Kia seems to be among the worst. I've had mixed feelings about Kia for a long time. <laughs> this is true. And then Porsche has a 77 day supply with 11,000 cars. Subaru, another great Japanese make that more of you could consider, has 88 day supply and 121,000 vehicles for sale. With the help of our car buying coach, Stuart, we just got a new Subaru for a longtime friend of ours, the Franks family in Minneapolis. And now we're moving into the slower movers category. Yep, Mini is at 90 days, Mercedes-Benz 98 days, Mitsubishi has 110 days of supply, and Volkswagen has 114. Two cars we covered recently, Mazda sitting at 130 days, Nissan at 131 days, Lincoln, another cushy brand that is sometimes overlooked, has 159 days of supply. Volvo is a bit surprising with 159 days of supply as well. And topping the chart with ridiculously slow sales and way too much inventory to do anyone any good. Ram has supply of 188 days of vehicles. Dodge also has 255 days of supply. Wow, that's got hurt. <laughs> so what does this all mean? More inventory means better deals? Mostly, yes. Here's a peek at some of the major brands and exactly which vehicles have bigger incentives relative to their inventories. We'll show pictures of each in case you're looking at something similar and hadn't thought of these specific models. We hope this helps you save money on your next vehicle purchase. As of April 2024, Toyota is offering a small range of incentives and finance deals. The minimal offers include customer cash and incentives up, and incentives up to $750 on selected models like the Toyota Camry and Corolla. Additionally, Toyota is providing special financing rates with some models eligible for 0% APR over 36 months, which helps to lower the cost of financing a new vehicle significantly. Sure. Lease deals are also competitive with options like the 2024 Toyota Corolla available at $288 per month on a 36 month lease. Toyota is still the caboose on the new car inventory level train. Honda inventory levels are a little higher than Toyota. Honda does not currently offer any cash back rebates, but when it comes to leases, the 2024 Honda Ridgeline and 2023 Ridgeline offer good value. The worst lease deals are on the 2024 Honda HRV and the 2024 Odyssey. You'll want to stay away from leasing those models. Hyundai celebrated a record setting March with sales climbing to 76,000 vehicles, a 2% increase. Hyundai has some surprisingly high inventory for them right now. Check it out. For Ford inventory levels, except the F-150 at 83 days of supply, all of their longtime models are over 100 days of supply. Comment below if you've driven a 2024 Ford SUV lately. Do you think these models are better or worse quality than in years past? Maybe this explains the bulging parking lots at Ford. Could be. Chevy isn't about the same boat. The Equinox still looks popular enough, and the Traverse has only a 23-day supply. Other than that, the Malibus and the Silverados seem to be piling up. All right, friends, here are some of the best deals, which include substantial cashback rebates across several automakers. When it comes to cashback rebates, Dodge is offering up to $22,250 on the 2023 Dodge Challenger and $19,500 on the 2023 Charger. Overall, the average rebate across all Dodge models is currently $11,500. You knew that was going to happen with their huge inventory levels. Yeah. Chrysler and Fiat are also providing impressive rebates with amounts like $3,100 and $3,500 respectively. Ford has enticing offers as well, including 0% APR for up to 72 months on models like the Edge, along with average cash back rebate of $3,000. Hyundai, Kia, and Chevrolet are providing good deals too, with average cash back rebates ranging from $1,600 to $4,800 and special financing rates in some cases. Lexus is offering significant incentives on certain models, such as 8,800 cashback rebates and favorable lease terms. 
These incentives can vary by region, so it's a good idea to check your local dealerships or use some online tools like realcartips.com, truecar.com, or car gurus to get precise local information. If you like what we teach and the content we produce but want direct help planning your car buying journey, consider a membership at the help desk with Liz starting at $24.99 for email support or $49.99 for texting support from both of us. Yep. We are busy, but for members, response time is always fast. We coach you on black book values, the steps of the car deal, and review your offers. If you want to talk directly to me, sign up for that $99 phone call and get all of your questions answered. By the way, that $99 phone call also makes you eligible for the texting support and the email support too. Also, this is the phone call that can hook you up with our new car broker service through our new team member, Stuart. I've got to say that when you see the video update on him, Stuart is on fire with the several homework guy viewers who immediately jumped on board with him and they are ecstatic about the savings they're getting. Not only in dollars, but in terms of avoiding the usual dealer hassles. Yes. Stuart's process is hassle-free car buying at its best, something we promised would happen sometime back. Searching for the best car deal? That's great, but what happens when the best deal you find isn't anywhere near you? In fact, it's miles away in another state. We're here with the top 10 steps you need to know when buying a car out of state and the common hassles you'll definitely want to avoid. Hello everyone, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, and joining me today is the amazing Elizabeth. Liz, take it away. We're here to guide you through the ins and outs of buying a car from another state in the effort to help you save time, money, and those dreaded hassles. And we have a special giveaway at the end. The process of buying an out-of-state car can easily be very straightforward, but it can also get ugly on you if you don't take all the right steps before you leave home. If you have any questions after seeing this show, feel free to comment below or contact us through our website, thehomeworkguy.com. Let's roll, Liz. All right, number one, get a vehicle history report for used cars. Before anything else, it's critical to obtain a vehicle history report from services like Carfax or AutoCheck. These reports can reveal important issues such as past accidents, flood damage, and equally important, any liens against the vehicle. Ensuring these liens are cleared is essential because you don't want to be stuck paying someone else's debt. A lot of dealers actually have a link right on their website right now with a free history report available for you. That's right, Liz. Number two, you need an independent inspection on used cars. Getting a used car checked out by an independent mechanic cannot be emphasized enough. Yes. This isn't just a quick look over. This should be a detailed inspection covering everything from engine performance and safety features to electrical systems and the undercarriage. It's best to find a mechanic who's geographically close to the car, but not too close to the seller to make sure they're not just in-town buddies. In order for a proper inspection to be done, the vehicle has to be put up on a hoist. You can do this step early in negotiations or wait until you're on the ground later. Just make sure that you don't skip it. We also have a couple of different videos on pre-purchase inspections linked in the video cards. Number three, handling state sales tax. This is a big one. When it comes to taxes and state fees, listen carefully, in most states, you need to pay sales tax to your own state only. Wherever the car will be registered, that's where the taxes and fees are paid. The only exception to this rule is California. So say you're from New Mexico and you buy your car in California, you'll pay California their taxes, drive the car home and pay state taxes and fees again in New Mexico. That's the greedy Californians for you. Them dang Californians. <laughs> Just don't buy a car out of state from California. There. So in any other state, you have the dealer sell you the car and later you go to your own DMV and register and pay taxes yourself. You can call your DMV before you leave to double check what you'll owe so you can plan ahead. If you're not buying from California, but rather another state, be careful with dealers who insist that you must pay them. It's happened plenty of times that the tax money never gets paid out to the correct state. And that really sucks when that happens. Yeah, totally. Number four, safety and emissions testing. Each state has different requirements for vehicle emissions and inspections. You'll need to verify what inspections are necessary in your home state. These could include emissions and safety tests and odometer verifications. Getting these done and obtaining the necessary certification is crucial for the registration process at your home state DMV. Make sure you do a little research in your own state before you buy. Yep. Number five, temporary registration. If you're driving the car back yourself, temporary registration is a must. You can't drive across the country without a legitimate plate or permit of some kind on your vehicle. Oftentimes, this can be obtained from the state where you bought the car, or in most states, you can get a temporary travel permit from your home state website or DMV office. Ensure all paperwork is in order, like the sales contract showing the purchase price, 
with proof that taxes were collected if the collection was done by the dealer. You need the evidence on dealer letterhead if you pay the dealer the taxes due in your home state. Don't forget to do this in case a dealer engages in funny business. We've heard of dealers failing to actually send in the out-of-state tax payment far too many times, and the problem is that there's no accountability and you'll be stuck paying those taxes twice unless you have a clear record that you paid them to the dealer. Number six, insurance is also a key part of this. Insurance coverage is indeed another critical step. Confirm with your insurance provider about how new car purchases are handled. If you currently have a full coverage policy on one or more of your existing cars, your policy may automatically cover new purchases for a limited period of time. Just ask your insurance rep to verify this is true. If not, you'll need immediate coverage, especially if you're financing the purchase. Yes. Knowing the insurance laws and ensuring you meet or exceed the minimum required coverage standard in your state is also vital. Number seven, get that title. When it comes to the title, following up on it is everything. Most states require you to register your new car within a certain period, often 30 days, to avoid late fees. If the car comes from a dealer, they might assist you with the out-of-state registration and paperwork. Be cautious with non-standard titles like salvage titles, as these can complicate the registration process and you don't want to buy a salvage car anyway. Yeah, number eight, verify the VIN. A VIN verification is a simple but powerful step. You can do this on sites like Ben Verified or by asking for an auto check or Carfax report we mentioned earlier. This step helps ensure the vehicle isn't stolen and also that it matches the make and model the dealer has advertised on their website. This process can sometimes actually be required by your state DMV as part of the registration process. Number nine, understanding the full cost. Crunch the numbers thoroughly. Use our out-the-door templates that we have on our website, thehomeworkguy.com, it's in the blog, and make sure you know what you'll be paying in writing. Consider the purchase price, taxes, registration fees, and any potential travel costs for picking up the car. These expenses can add up quickly, potentially offsetting the savings from buying out of state. If you're having it shipped to you, that's another expense to consider against the value of what you're saving. And number 10, test drive locally first. Even if your heart is set on a specific car, Try to test drive a similar model close to home. You must know that you actually like the vehicle you're after and that it fits you well. Oh yeah. This gives you a clear idea of what to expect and helps confirm whether the out-of-state hassle is even worth it. And there you have it. These detailed steps should help you navigate the complexities of buying a car out of state. Why buying a Nissan or Mazda brand car could be considered a good choice at the moment for several reasons reflecting both the current automotive market trends and these brand specific advantages. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, and right across the way is the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Liz, you work every day with a ton of our channel members. What do you have to say about buyers considering either a Nissan or a Mazda right now? Well, first of all, let's take a look at the current inventory available at the top four Japanese brands. Right now, for comparison's sake, Toyota inventory is at 34 days. Honda is at 44 days, making both of the brands tougher to find good deals on right now. That's right. But no worries, because two great cars are right behind them. Mazda is sitting at 102 days of inventory and Nissan at 104 days. For both Nissan and Mazda, that means lots of good deals are available. So first up is Mazda, who has scored very high in reliability and has a lot of inventory right now, paving the way for some great deals. And Nissan also has very high inventory and they're doing very well. With regard to overall reliability, Mazda has even ranked number one ahead of Toyota for 2020. Admittedly, Nissan does have active recalls right now, but it's for limited years and mostly involves their backup cameras. In my opinion, that's a heck of a lot better than a recall for engine or transmission troubles. A backup camera is a relatively small inconvenience. All right, we'll get more out on Mazda soon in another show, but for now, let's get rolling on the top seven reasons to consider a Nissan car purchase right now. Number one, competitive pricing and value. Nissan often positions its vehicles with competitive pricing while still offering a range of features that buyers find attractive, such as advanced safety technology, comfort, and fuel efficiency. They are well below the $48,000 plus industry average. Yeah. Right now, CarGurus reports that the average price of a Nissan is actually under $20,000. This balance between cost and quality features can provide some good value for car buyers. Top selling models in the Nissan lineup have been the Rogue and the Altima. Number two, innovative technology. Nissan has been at the forefront of integrating innovative technology into its vehicles, including advancements in electric vehicles with the Nissan Leaf, one of the world's best-selling EVs on the market. The brand's commitment to electrification and sustainable driving solutions may appeal to you environmentally conscious consumers. 
Number three, comprehensive warranty. Nissan vehicles typically come with a comprehensive warranty package, including limited vehicle coverage and powertrain coverage, which can provide peace of mind to new car buyers. Every new Nissan vehicle is protected by basic coverage, bumper to bumper for three years or 36,000 miles, and by powertrain coverage for five years or 60,000 miles, whichever comes first. Mm -hmm. However, a 2024 Nissan Titan right now comes with five years or 100,000 miles of basic coverage and matching powertrain coverage for five years or 100,000 miles. Make sure you check the warranty on the specific year and model that you're interested in. These warranties protect you from material and workmanship issues from the factory. Number four, improved models. Recent years have seen Nissan refresh and update many of its key models, improving design, technology, and performance to better compete in their segments. This makes newer Nissan models particularly attractive for those seeking the latest in automotive design and technology. Nissan's sedan lineup begins with the value-minded Versa and includes the compact Sentra and midsize Altima. Nissan also has two sports cars, the Z and the GTR. The full-size Titan and Titan XD pickup trucks are discontinued after the 2024 model year, but the mid-size Frontier continues to be built. Also, I must say with regard to reliability, we are reasonably impressed with the average annual repair cost to a Nissan consumer, with that spending sitting at $500 a year right now. That is quite low and fits into pretty much anyone's budget. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Number five, financing and incentives. With the auto industry constantly evolving, Nissan, like many manufacturers, often offers attractive financing rates, lease rates, and incentives to new car buyers. These offers can make purchasing a new Nissan more affordable in the short term. Right now, 0% financing is available on some models with 2.9 and 4.9 being available on others. Those are very attractive rates. That's right. Number six, fuel efficiency. Many Nissan models are designed with fuel efficiency in mind, which can lead to long-term savings on fuel cost, an important consideration given fluctuating fuel prices. Nissan Versa has generally been the most fuel efficient gas-powered Nissan model, returning up to 40 miles per gallon on the highway and 32 miles per gallon in city driving. The Nissan Altima miles per gallon ratings and Sentra fuel economy follow closely behind as both of these Nissan sedans can deliver up to 39 miles per gallon on the highway. That's very solid. Yes. And number seven, diverse lineup. Nissan's vehicle lineup is quite diverse, ranging from compact cars and sedans to SUVs and trucks, not to mention their electric vehicles. This diversity ensures that potential buyers can likely find a Nissan vehicle that fits their needs and lifestyle. Nissan models are also largely manufactured in the USA. Almost a dozen Nissan models are built in the United States. These rides include the Altima, Murano, Rogue, Maxima, Leaf, Pathfinder, NV, Frontier, and Titan. In addition to these vehicles, some of Nissan's powertrains are manufactured in the USA as well. There's also market factors to consider. Depending on current economic conditions, such as interest rates and inflation, and inventory levels especially, which we've already shared are above 100 days for Nissan, there might be additional market-driven reasons that make buying a Nissan more appealing at the moment. Before making a decision, it's crucial to consider the current market dynamics, Nissan's latest offerings, and how they align with your personal or family needs, budget, and long-term vehicle expectations. Always conduct the latest research and consider taking a test drive to ensure the vehicle meets your expectations. Also, I'd like to share a recent Nissan shopping experience by one of our viewers, Rose Harris. Rose wrote, My husband and I were recently shopping for a used SUV at CarMax when I noticed a similar SUV online at our local Nissan dealer. I called the dealer to see if the car was available at the price listed. I was told yes. My husband went to the dealer and test drove the SUV. The dealer beat our credit union's financing, and we said no to all the add-ons. The next step was the finance guy. We said no to all the add-ons again. He printed our contract that included $1,191 of add-ons. Go we figure. Yeah. We refused to pay for those add-ons. We were told that we had signed something with the salesman agreeing to an optional protection plan. This plan included nitrogen in the tires, whoa, plastic strips on the doors, and a 12-month car theft plan. All junk. Mm, yeah, yeah. If they said if our car was stolen during the first 12 months of ownership and was determined to be unrecoverable, the dealer would cut us a check for $2,500. That'll never happen. No. I said, so you were trying to charge us an additional $1,200 for air. We refused and told him that we'd take our business to CarMax. We decided to leave after the guy left to talk to his manager again. He just kept repeating that it was already on the car. I told him it was a used car and that they should have already included air in the price. We were halfway home when the finance guy called us to come back. My husband didn't want to go back, but I was tired of shopping. The dealer had a 3.99% rate. 
evidence friends that walking out definitely helped these guys. I love hearing that more and more of our viewers are pushing back on dealer nonsense and winning. Totally. Friends, maybe you're that type of person who readily admits that you kind of suck at standing up for yourself at car dealerships. If so, that's okay. If you missed our recent show where we announced a new addition to the homework guy team, Stuart Cooper, known as the car Hagler, I want to remind you about that video. From start to finish, Stuart does it all for you. He negotiates your trade, negotiates the price of your new car, and gets rid of all the dealer nonsense. The service isn't free though. It starts with the $99 phone call with Kevin. And by the way, if Kevin determines you're not a good fit to work with Stuart, we just refund 100% of your money. It's that easy. Beyond that initial phone call for $99, assuming you're a good fit to work with Stuart, we'll send you an invoice for a $750 deposit. Most of that goes directly to Stuart. Once you have your car and assuming you're happy with the service, you'll also owe an additional $200 payable directly to Stuart. That brings your total cost of $1,050 well below the $1,500 charged by other content creators here on YouTube. Not only are we several hundred dollars cheaper, but you get three of us to work with, me, Liz, and Stuart. Yep. Our lineup of support is far more effective than any comparable service out there, and we guarantee you'll save thousands of dollars, many times more than what it costs to hire us to do this for you. Yes, we love working with you. In addition, you don't have to lift a finger. We do it all for you. No dealer negotiations to deal with, no lowball trade numbers to laugh at, no stupid dealer lines about forced add-ons or ridiculous fees. We pave the road for you. When the time comes, you just have to go in and sign for your car. And we coach you on exactly what you need to say when you visit the dealership. And for those of you who just need a little one-on-one -on -one coaching, we have several packages available for you. First, there's the Homework Guy Help Package, which is $24.99 for email support from Liz, turnaround time is less than 24 hours, and a $49.99 consults package, which is tech support with both me and Liz, turnaround time is the same day. Yes. And that is $49.99, also includes the email support too. Last of all is the $99 phone call directly with me, which is 45 minutes of my undivided time answering your questions and giving you everything you need to succeed. I typically schedule this call within 24 hours after it's paid. Why buying a Mazda brand car could be particularly appealing right now. As promised, we are back with a show dedicated to Mazda brand vehicles for several reasons which reflect both on the Mazda brand's unique offerings and broader automotive market trends. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunt with The Homework Guy, and right across the way from me is the amazing Elizabeth, The Homework Gal. Liz, you work every day with a ton of the members we have here on the channel. What yes. do you have to say about buyers considering the purchase of a Mazda? Well, as we did with our show on Nissan, let's start by taking a look at current inventory available on the top four Japanese brands. Right now, for comparison's sake, Toyota inventory is at 34 days. Honda is only at 44 days, making both of these brands tougher to find good deals on right now. No worries, because a great brand like Mazda is right behind them. Mazda is sitting at 102 days right now, nearly the same level of Nissan. For Mazda, that means lots of good deals being available. Also, Mazda has a great track record with regard to reliability, traditionally scoring very high. With a lot of inventory right now, available cars are paving the way for some great deals. With regard to overall reliability, Mazda was even ranked number one ahead of Toyota in 2020, and that's no small accomplishment. Here are the top 10 most compelling reasons why now might be a good time to consider buying a Mazda. Number one, global semiconductor shortage recovery. In general, the Asian automotive industry has been quite slow to recover from the global semiconductor shortage, which previously led to reduced inventory and higher prices. That is no longer the case with Mazda, with available cars easily exceeding 100 days of inventory. As the situation continues to improve, Mazda dealerships may have better inventory levels, allowing for more choice and potentially more room for negotiation. Number two, innovative design and engineering. Mazda is known for its Kodo, the soul of motion design philosophy, which results in beautifully crafted vehicles that stand out for their aesthetic appeal. Coupled with the Sky Active technology, which aims to enhance performance and fuel efficiency without compromising on power, Mazda vehicles offer a blend of design and engineering excellence that's hard to match. To add to this, Mazda is consistently ranked among the most reliable brands. Number three, competitive pricing and value. Mazda vehicles often come with a high level of standard features that might be considered premium in other brands. This combined with competitive pricing means buyers can enjoy luxury level comforts and technology at a more accessible price point. So what is the average Mazda price? Depending on factors such as model, year, and condition, 
The average used Mazda sells for just under 20,000 in today's market. This is 23.46% lower than the market average according to CarGuru's price index. Number four, award-winning vehicles. Mazda has garnered numerous awards for quality, design, and overall value, including accolades from automotive critics. These awards are a testament to the brand's commitment to excellence and could give buyers added confidence in their purchase. Consumer Reports says this small automaker is most known for crafting fun-to-drive character into their models. Mazda uses lightweight construction and efficient engine technology to bolster fuel economy. Although often overlooked by consumers more often than not, Mazda's deliver nimble handling throughout its line. The plucky MX-5 Miata Roadster remains a benchmark sports car. The line is bolstered by a variety of SUVs with the small CX-30, larger CX-50, and well-established CX-5, and the new three-row CX-90 replacing the CX-9. As we already stated, Mazda is consistently ranked among the most reliable brands. Number five, advanced safety features. Mazda's focus on safety is evident in its iActiveSense technology, a suite of advanced safety and driver assist features designed to inform, alert, and protect. With safety being a top priority for many buyers, Mazda's investment in cutting-edge safety technology makes its vehicles an attractive option. The website MazdaUSA.com boasts that Mazda won the 2023 IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, this was for the 2024 Mazda CX-90, the CX-90 PHEV, the CX-30, the Mazda 3 sedan, and the Mazda 3 hatchback have earned a 2023 IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. Number six, environmental initiatives. Mazda is actively working towards reducing its carbon footprint with commitments to electrification and the development of more eco-friendly vehicles. For buyers interested in environmentally sustainable options, Mazda's upcoming electric vehicles, EVs, and hybrids offer promising alternatives. Number seven, favorable financing offers. In response to market dynamics and to attract buyers, Mazda and its dealerships may offer favorable financing rates, lease deals, or incentives. These financial incentives can significantly reduce the cost of ownership, making it a financially opportune time to purchase a new Mazda. Make sure you visit MazdaUSA.com for specific details. Number eight, positive ownership experiences. Mazda consistently ranks highly in customer satisfaction and reliability surveys. Owning a Mazda not only means driving a well-designed and reliable vehicle, but also enjoying a positive ownership experience over the long term. The main complaint that we've seen has been that for some people, like someone my size, the car might be just a little small. Oh, sure. Number nine, strong resale value. Mazda vehicles tend to hold their value well, offering strong resale value. This can make purchasing a Mazda a smart investment for the future, especially for buyers considering trade-in or resale down the line. On average, used Mazdas preserve the value better than many other brands, only being edged out by Honda and Toyota. Before making a decision, it's crucial to consider the current market dynamics, Mazda's latest offerings, and how they align with your personal and family needs, budget, and long-term vehicle expectations. Always conduct the latest research and consider taking a test drive to ensure that the vehicle meets your expectations. As I said earlier, visit MazdaUSA.com for more information. Despite lots of good deals being available on Mazda, it doesn't mean that Mazda dealers won't still be jerks about their cars. For example, Mammoth Enterprises writes, Car fees in Florida haven't come down. Got a quote for $21,395 on a 2021 Mazda 6 Touring with an $895 dealer fee, e-filing fee of $199.87, and a new tag of $400. This brought it up to $22,893 plus taxes. I emailed one of the salesmen to say it was too much. Someone bought it. As long as people are willing to go along with these fees, they will keep doing it. Good point. The lies told by dealer finance officers, and unfortunately... It's going to be a lengthy list and needs a little bit of a setup. Buckle up, friends, because dealer finance officers play a significant role in the car buying process, especially when it comes to financing and insurance options, which is why the office is called F&I. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, and joining me across the way is the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Today, we're going to teach you about the tactics of two very different kinds of finance officers that we've both worked with in the past. For privacy purposes, we're going to refer to them as Dan and Galen. Their offices were side by side in the same dealership, but customers had a very different experience depending on which office they landed in. Dan had some product sales like you'd expect, but he also had a very relaxed approach, never engaging in typical strong arm tactics. His buyers had a pleasant experience. Galen, however, was a very different story. 
He told so many lies, it's almost impossible for us to fit all of them in one show. <laughs> the kind of finance officer we're talking about today that you need to be prepared for is someone like Galen. His customers got their heads torn off and bought tons of expensive, unneeded stuff. The dealer owner just loved him for it. As always, thanks for joining me, Liz. Sure thing, Kevin. Friends, a customer getting their heads torn off is a pretty gruesome illustration of what happened, but it's not a phrase Kevin made up conveniently for the show. It's actually a well-worn phrase used in dealerships all around the country to describe a person who just got totally fleeced. They were bent over the barrel and had their pockets cleaned out. We felt scummy to be working in the same building with staff who were praised for ripping people off. We're covering this topic today to help prevent that from happening to you. Every once in a while, a car buyer gets lucky and runs into a finance officer who's more like Dan. Right. If this describes your last experience, your timing was great, but it's important for you to know that you just got lucky. <laughs> Everyone yeah. knows that counting on luck isn't a reliable strategy, and it won't help you very much when you run into a guy like Galen, a guy I'm proud to say I helped get fired. I had already been fired from that dealership for being too honest, and working from the outside, I assisted a customer with filing a complaint with the state AG's office. Let me know if you'd like to know more about how that went down. Kevin hit the nail on the head by saying that hoping you'll get lucky isn't a strategy that you should rely on when entering dealer finance. Never. Never. Because most of the time, lady luck just doesn't show up. Today we're going to help arm you against the finance officer who is jacked up on Red Bull and feeling confident when you walk into their office. This officer is like Galen and is the worst of the worst. Interestingly, Galen type finance officers actually do have an energy drink before seeing you. All the and, time. And they need a little time between customers to get mentally set for a new round of unethical combat and some sort of weird emotional cleansing routine after the last episode. Yes, and many times Galen would come out of his office, hand me a couple of bucks and say, bring me a Red Bull and then give me 10 minutes and bring your customer in. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> Today's video is about the big contrast in the types of finance officers and the many common lies the true sharks of dealer finance, like Galen, rely upon. You knew you were in Galen's office because you were met with a heavy odor of expensive cologne. Galen getting fired wasn't entirely his fault. The dealer owner demanded this kind of behavior out of him, but that didn't stop the owner from using him as a scapegoat when the Attorney General's office got involved. The owner, who all refer to as Scotty, informed the AG's office that he learned that Galen had been using drugs and was behaving irrationally. A, a total BS story. Yeah. Instead of facing huge fines and a possible suspension of his business license, Scotty just got to fire Galen and send him packing. The story doesn't end there because Galen suddenly appeared in yet another dealership, also owned by Scotty, just south of there. While it's true that there are a few dealer finance officers who are just straightforward and honest, like Dan, there are far too many Galens out there. To be clear, there's no crime in making a profit. What we are objecting to are the lies and deceit that are used to set up gross overcharges and ridiculous levels of profit. Most dealer employees fail to understand that. Listen up, friends, because you could be the next one up on the dealer finance chopping block. Here are some of the common Galen-type deceitful claims, statements, and outright lies that he and other dealer finance officers resort to. Lie number one, you must finance through us to get this deal. Sometimes dealerships suggest that special discounts or deal prices are contingent upon using their financing. However, the real deal should not depend on where you get your loan. It's often just a tactic to prevent you from shopping around for better financing rates. If you had taken the time to read the FTC cars rule we mentioned several times, you would have noticed that the lie isn't actually legal. Under the section describing the offering price, the cars rule plainly says, in connection with the sale or financing of vehicles, dealers must clearly disclose the offering price defined as the full cash price for which the dealer will sell or finance the vehicle to any consumer. The only costs that can be excluded from the offering price are required government charges like taxes, license and registration costs or inspection or certification fees. This here says nothing about the price being dependent on using a dealer's financing. Lie number two, I'm sorry your credit score was lower than you thought. <laughs> Your credit score is lower than you thought it would be, huh? This is a tactic to offer you financing at a higher interest rate than you qualify for. Never be sitting in dealer finance and not knowing exactly what loan term and interest rate you qualify for. Always know your credit score before going into negotiations and always get pre-approved for a loan from your own bank or credit union. A similar lie to this is you can only qualify for a high interest rate. Similar to misrepresenting your credit score, this statement aims to lock you into a higher APR, the annual percentage rate, allowing the dealer to give you a high buy rate that's significantly padded from the actual sell rate the bank quoted on your loan. 
one of our car buyers blogs goes into this in depth on the homeworkguy.com. Again, having a pre-approval can give you a better sense of the interest rates that you should expect. Lie number three, extended warranties and add-ons are mandatory. Dealers might try to include various add-ons like extended warranties, gap insurance or protection packages, suggesting they're already on the car or required for loan approval. These are always optional and should always be considered only based on your actual needs and budget. See our blog post on Tide Selling. Forcing you to buy any extras or add-ons is illegal. Line number four, you have to make at least four payments on this loan in order to keep the <laughs> rebates. While some loans might have prepayment penalties, they are not as common in car loans. This is especially true if the loan term exceeds 61 months. Ensure you read the loan agreement carefully and ask about any potential penalties for early repayment if your loan is shorter than 61 months. Line number five, the loan approval is only good for today. This pressure tactic is designed to rush you into making a decision without comparing other financing options. Reputable lenders' loan offers usually stand for an extended period of time, allowing you to shop around. Line number six, you need a gap policy. Gap insurance purchase here is cheaper than anywhere else. First of all, if you put enough money down, you're guaranteed to not need gap. That's part of the reason we advise 20% down. So the first part of the lie is that it's not necessarily true that you need gap. Also, gap insurance is never cheaper at a dealership. If you don't know about gap, read about it on our blog about gap at thehomeworkguy.com. When it comes to Gap, dealerships always mark up the price significantly. If you think you need it, it's worth checking with other options like an auto insurance company or a local credit union for a comparison. You need to buy now to qualify for the special financing rate. This lie is a classic high pressure tactic. Special financing rates are usually determined by the manufacturers and available for a set period, not just for the day you visit. Could you imagine how stupid it would be if people showing up the next day didn't qualify for the financing rate that they're quoting you? Line number seven, the prepaid maintenance plan is already installed on this vehicle. Yeah. As if. Prepaid no. maintenance is an insurance policy and it's always 100% optional. In fact, it says so right on the document. There's zero possibility that it could already be on the car. A prepaid maintenance policy could never be on a car that isn't sold because a policy holder must be named first. And that's you, the car buyer. Yep. Line number eight, the banks aren't open right now, so we're going to let you take the car home and call you in the next few days to sign out. This is a statement leading into a spot delivery. Be very careful here. Maybe your credit is a little challenged and they don't want you shopping around while they are busy with other customers. Just know that if they don't get your financing done, you're entitled to 100% of your deposit back and you can just return the car. Line number nine, we got your loan approved but the banker has some stipulations. Ooh. This lie is convenient because it takes the financing officer out of the picture of being the bad guy for forcing you to spend more money but mm -hmm. it's entirely false and he or she uses this argument to set up a product sale like an extended warranty or an overpriced gap insurance policy claiming the bank wants you to have it. You can probably see by now that there are so many lies you'd almost have thought we should have done a part two with this but hey you're here now let's keep rolling. It's our goal to make sure we cover as many bases as possible in a single show. Here we go. Finance officer lie number 10. This is a fixed interest rate and is non-negotiable. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> Finance officers love to rely upon deceptive and complicated financial word tracks to help throw off even the most savvy car buyer. If the first nine lies weren't enough, the fun of buying a new car quickly fades when faced with this kind of tactic. If a finance officer does not clearly explain in simple language the terms of the loan, interest rates, and other financial aspects, it's probably time to walk because you'll feel very confused and taken advantage of. Line number 11, you have to buy now to get this deal. Mm -hmm. Total BS, but the finance office is often where high pressure sales tactics were employed and you should know these sharks are the highest paid salesmen in the entire dealership for a good reason. Buyers are often pressured into making quick decisions on the stop in finance taking the joy out of what could have been an enjoyable experience with the right finance officer. Somebody like Dan. Line number 12, add-ons and extras are a great deal, but only today. This is more psychological manipulation designed to get you to think their overpriced products are actually being discounted. Nothing could actually be further from the truth. Extras and add-ons are never a good deal. And if you buy them, they will depreciate many times faster than the car itself. Two to $3,000 spent in the finance office typically has zero real equity benefit to the car itself. Pretty much is never worth a dime. Never. Line number 13, we do hundreds of car loans a month. Your bank only does a few. We know banking much better than they do. 
The finance officer often has a fragile ego and they want you to think you're sitting at the desk of one of the most capable, experienced, and professional people <laughs> in the car loan business. Yeah. The funny thing is that many finance officers have zero background in real world finance. Line number 14. My job is to get you the best possible deal. Of course that's not their job. Why would they ever want to get you the best possible deal? Who do you think this person is working for? You or the dealership. 100% of their effort will be poured into making this the biggest, fattest deal for the dealership that they can possibly get away with. If they do that, the dealer owner will be very proud and pay them for it. Line number 15, this is what most of my customers do. Dealers know that in general, people like to do what they think other people have done yep. because if other people are doing it, well, it must be the right thing to do, right? So they will make this statement about anything they really want you to buy. That's a big one. Lie 16, my bank owes me a favor, so let me see what I can do. Bankers never owe dealers a favor, and especially not the specific finance officer sitting across the desk from you. Finance officers always want you to think that they have close personal relationships with the banks they use, and they love to present their relationship as the reason that they can offer you a deal. Line number 17, I want to be totally honest with you. Uh, you know. <laughs> Every great liar uses the to be honest with you phrase at some point in the conversation. This is something a truly honest person rarely ever says to you. That's a clue. Yep. Line number 18, we take deposits on Zelle, Cash App, or Venmo. This just happened with one of our channel members recently. It's a major red flag when a dealer suddenly wanders outside the normal policy of accepting a credit card, a personal check, or cash for a deposit and goals for apps that are typically used for personal non-business related transactions. Line number 19, we can accept over 30% cash down. You see, the more you finance, the more money there is to be made by the dealer, so they don't want you to put large sums of money down on your vehicle. Right. Big down payments also eliminate the need for an overpriced dealer gap policy we touched on earlier, and they want to try to keep the door open to a gap policy sale. Line number 20, we're not making any money on this. It can shock you to hear this, but it's entirely false, and this is used to push you to give in to more product proposals more often. Manipulating emotions is something finance officers are very gifted at. Some finance officers resort to emotional manipulation, playing on buyer's excitement and eagerness to drive their new car home to push them into agreeing to less favorable terms. Line number 21, I can't believe our manager is letting your car go out of here for this amount. This is a very well-worn word track and can be used during the sales process too, to get you to let your guard down. It puts a smile on your face and you feel like you're winning in the midst of huge losses. That's right. Line number 22, this is the lowest rate you'll get anywhere. Ooh, no. This goes back to an earlier lie just from a different angle. Finance officers always want you to think they have close personal relationships with the banks they use and love to present their relationship as the reason they can offer you such a great deal. Lie 23, I can get you your ideal monthly payment. This one's tricky. You may have stated your payment goal very clearly, but here's where the finance officer goes for the first payment bump. Yes, they will actually go for getting you a higher payment than you desired. If you object and act like you leave, they'll say, okay, hold on, let me see what I can do. Line number 24, all you need to do now is sign and drive. <laughs> That's a disastrous road. Yeah. The initial emphasis is speed while actually going very slow to wear you out and maximize product sales. Telling you that all there is left to do now is sign and drive gets you eager for the finish line because it seems like you're being helped. You lean forward with interest and you get hasty about signing documents. Number 25, we can't waive that fee, it's the law. Yeah, that's a total pile of crap. Yeah. Line number 26, I used a coupon to get you a lower rate. Uh, yeah. The first time I heard Galen use this term, I said, let me see that coupon. He looked down and just mumbled under his breath. Well, you know what I mean. I'm sure others besides Galen use the coupon line, but you'll never see such a creature. Bigfoot will be easier to find. No joke. Lie 27. I typed it up exactly as you asked me to, mm -hmm, with his fingers crossed. This is a different take on the sign and drive lie. Remember how we said to always read everything in your, in your car contract before you sign? This lie by the finance officer can be interpreted as advice telling you that you don't need to read anything. Sign it and get out of there. Don't fall for it. All right, line number 28, I'm throwing in the extended warranty for free. Pure nonsense. Nothing has ever been thrown in for free, and the finance office has no authority to give things away. They just want you to think that you're getting a freebie. Yep. Lie 29, I'm going to need you to sign here that you're declining this. Getting you to sign for things you're declining is a takeaway tactic. It feels like you should have done it because you have to sign to decline it. 
Just say no thanks and push it back across the desk. If the dealer finance officer claims that they are required to get your declining signature, ask, by who? The who is their management because it's a proven sales technique. Line number 30. If you have any questions about anything later, just call me. I'll get right back to you. Nope. <laughs> if there's one thing no finance officer wants to do, it's talk to a customer after they left the finance office. They'll never get back to you on anything. To them, you're like a one-night stand they just as soon forget, and forgetting you is exactly what they'll do. Try to call them and their phone line will always be busy. They are tied up with ripping somebody else off. For sure. Lie 31. We don't accept personal checks. Now that's nonsense. They even accept post-dated checks. Of course. Many times when a buyer needs a bit more cash to make a deal work, the finance officer will bring them in and ask, can you write us a post-dated check? If you say yes, the deal gets done and the dealer is all too eager to accept your check. We could have easily kept going. Just oh, yeah. remember that almost everything a finance officer says to you is to mislead you, deceive you, and even trap you. With a guy like Galen, if his lips are moving, he's lying. <laughs> Here you are sitting in the office with this one last stop to make, having spent hours agreeing on a price with the salesperson, and you feel committed to the deal only to find yourself facing unexpected terms and costs in the finance office. This can make you feel trapped, and even though you know you should, you might not want to walk away after investing so much of your own time in the process. Dealers don't want you leaving at this point without a car either. It's called blowing up the deal. A finance officer who goes too far too often and blows up too many deals eventually gets fired from that dealership. To maintain the excitement of buying a new car and ensure a positive experience, as we've always said, it's crucial for buyers to do their homework ahead of time. Understanding your financing options, knowing your credit score, and being familiar with common sales tactics can help you navigate the finance office with confidence. Remember, you have the right to ask questions, request clear explanations, and if necessary, walk away from the deal that doesn't feel right. Blow up the deal and watch that dealer scramble to fix it. If this all sounds like too much hassle to navigate on your own and you're, and you're needing a confidence boost, you can get direct assistance from us by visiting our website today at thehomeworkguy.com and get signed up for a membership right away. We do love working directly with our members. The reports of the great deals that you guys are getting right now with our assistance is very inspiring. That's right. We greatly appreciate the opportunity to work with all of you. Thanks again to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back. And to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. On behalf of the entire Homer Guy team and the amazing Elizabeth, I'm Kevin Hunter. Thanks for listening.